Mark Carbone here at uh, Huron Heights uh, Secondary School uh, with Principal Ed Dote, where we've had a, an absolutely fabulous day um, talking to staff about the new one-to-one uh, -one Chromebook pilot here. We thought we'd uh, maybe just capture some highlights from, from the day, but Ed and I were at a, a accommodation steering committee meeting yesterday, and I thought uh, at the meeting Ed shared a wonderful uh, perspective and that that would actually be a good spot to kick off our conversation today. Okay, thanks Mark. Um, yeah, sometime during the summer uh, I read an article on, uh, I think it was the CNN website, but and it talked about uh, ranking presidents of the United States using the criteria which president of the United States changed the discussion in the country the most. And, and I thought that uh, changing the conversation was a kind of a nice paradigm to talking about educational change because we've had things come and we've had things go. And um, the president that changed the conversation the most, by the way, was Ronald Reagan, according wow. to that survey. And, and I, I pondered that a little bit and thought, okay, in terms of what we're doing with the Chromebook project, and we certainly saw it in the interviews today, mm -hmm. um, this is fundamentally changing the conversation in the school. This, like no other initiative I've ever seen, has uh, changed the way people not only interact in their classroom, but interact with their colleagues, interact with the school board office, interact with the administration, and it is a fundamental sea change in how we do business in schools today. And that's only been, it's less than two months in, and that, that's, we're already seeing that, and that came out in the interview you know, Absolutely. today as well. Well, and, and that's fantastic to hear that the, the conversation is, is changing and maybe you can think of the interviews today and some other things you, you uh, shared with me uh, over the phone on social media in the last couple of months, maybe a highlight or two sure. that you think is important from a school leadership perspective. Okay. So, so once upon a time, um, professional development was delivered as, um, as little packages and you, you bought the package. So you would go to the workshop, you would attend the seminar, you would do whatever was in the box. And, and what we're seeing now is people who are uh, across a continuum in terms of their thinking this way. And now a lot of our professional development is coming internally from our own staff. And, and I've seen collaboration now not only within departments, but between departments and between schools. So, for example, a small department like a music department, you maybe have one or two teachers in each school. Right. They're now collaborating with uh, music teachers from other schools in the one-to-one -one project to try and get a critical mass so they can exchange best practice. Um, in every case, they are honoring what the curriculum dictates. Right. But they're using um, technology to approach the curriculum in different, in different ways. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, my geography people, for example, use a, uh, a GIS program. The GIS program isn't fully compatible with the, uh, with the Chromebook, so my teacher contacted the vendor. The vendor agreed to come in and do some tweaking, some in-servicing on how to make this happen. They've invited the other schools involved in the one-on-one one -on -one project to uh, share in that session as well. So, Internally, externally, it's all ground-driven professional development in terms of what's going on. Um, it has been um, just amazing in that regard. Well, that's that's fantastic, and I'm interested in your comment that the technology is not changing the curriculum per se, <coughs> but it's opening new doors to explore things yeah. in new ways. And certainly, when I think about the Ontario provincial perspective. That's certainly, uh, I believe, what was described in Michael Fullen's documents around uh, leveraging technology as an enabler okay. and uh, looking at communicating, creating, collaborating as, as key elements of, of yeah. the learning environment. Yeah. And, and one of the things that uh, intro the introduction of technology to the teaching practice has done is it's, it's actually forced people to go back to their curriculum and rebuild their courses and so those courses that may have drifted a little bit from the curriculum over time are now being recalibrated to the to the standards in the curriculum. 
Um, if you're looking at student achievement as a benchmark for uh, determining whether this technology is making students get higher grades, um, we heard from a teacher today who talked about the fact that um, feedback provided prior to the submission of a final piece of writing in an English class, uh, the feedback has uh, enhanced the performance of the students by a full level. And I think that's a dramatic statement about the use of technology. The rapid turnover, the ease with which teachers can provide that feedback and get it back to the kids quickly mm -hmm. has, has demonstrated at the senior level that this is, that this is working. Well, that's, that's fantastic. I think um, just that professional cycle of, of revisiting, recalibrating, really, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the germ of innovation mm -hmm. and uh, letting people just explore in new ways and, and find ways that perhaps enhance the teaching, enhance and improve the learning, and that then impacts interest and engagement, I would say, not just on the student side of the fence, but for teachers as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And we heard today from first-year teachers and from some veteran teachers. And uh, the veterans are learning from the first-year teachers who are themselves learning from the kids in the classroom. Because we're now teaching kids where they're at. All right? we, we talked about, you know, we're, we're in education because we had a great educational experience. And what worked for us in our day will obviously work for kids. That, doesn't, that argument doesn't hold anymore because the kids are, are thinking in different ways and they're using different things. Um, the paper and pen is disappearing and it's all done uh, on keyboards and online and through digital sharing. And Absolutely, and I, I think too, I've, I've heard in, in many different contexts uh, um, within our organization, um, describing ourselves as a learning organization, and, and this to me is a real example where that comes to life. It's, students to students, students and staff learning together, staff to staff and then inter-school and it really brings that idea to life in, in a new way and almost embodies that expression in more of a true manner than, than it might. Yep. It's uh, certainly uh, not so much about prepackaged content and delivering it out, it's about learning and moving in real time. Yep. Yeah, and, and the example we heard from this morning, the, the student who discovered a particular Google app that facilitated the reading of, of text and, and the teacher then capitalizing on the reading of text to allow the students to listen to what they've written before they submit it for assessment to the teacher is improving the, the lives of those kids in their classroom experience as well. Uh, it goes back to one of the things that you said uh, years ago, Mark, that uh, it's important to sort of just play in the sandbox, right? right. We, we, we put these uh, tools and this technology in the hands of teachers and we trust that they will make sound decisions and move forward with this stuff and engage the kids and the, that engagement reflects in, in increased student achievement and minimizes behavior issues. There's countless stories around this building about how when the Chromebooks come out the kids are quiet, they're focused on what's going on in class and there's none of the sort of uh, hooliganism that sometimes erupts uh, in, in classroom settings. So. Perfect. Now I know um, uh, in any staff, and, and I assume yours is probably typical, where you've got people very comfortable with technology, uh, some that are moderately comfortable, others that are really being uh, pushed to dip in and give this a try mm -hmm. relatively for the first time. So in terms of maybe uh, adjusting to uh, uh, the technology in the room and using Google Apps and Google Classroom, for example, how how has that kind of played out across the spectrum? For, it's it's for been an interesting experience, and I've I've got some some windows into your question. Um, let, let's talk about the, the grade nine uh, parent information that we had recently. The overwhelming comment from parents at the end of the evening was that they were they were just blown away by how this uh, introduction of technology had changed the the nature of the conversation at home. Oh. Yeah, I mean, the, kid, the kids come home with their Chromebooks, they can open it up, they, can, they show mom and dad what, what they've been working on. Um, the really, really interesting part of that evening was we had a session where parents would go to the library and be sort of have the Chromebook project explained to them. And the kids came along and they brought their Chromebooks and at one point they were asked to open their Chromebooks up, log in, and show mom and dad around their Google Classroom spaces. 
And in a school where grade nine kids take four courses, the vast majority of kids had four Google Classroom environments to show their parents. So the buy-in is tremendous. And we've got people teaching grade nine who are in their first year of teaching and in their last year of teaching. And the buy-in seems to be uh, right across that, uh, right across that uh, domain, right? Um, and, and it's not like we are preaching, thou shalt, thou shalt, thou shalt. It's an open invitation to participate in this environment. And, and some people, like you said, are coming along quickly. Some people are leading the charge. Uh, people are coming along less quickly, but everybody is involved in, to some extent. Oh, that's fantastic. Have you um, uh, tried any uh, uh, approaches to... Uh encouraging staff to share in other environments such as uh, you know staff meeting <coughs> department yeah we've so got um, we've got a really bright keen innovative staff here and and I like to showcase what's going on um, so a casual conversation with the teacher in the hall one day led me to uh, an idea of inviting departments to show us at a staff meeting we have monthly staff meetings um, for five minutes show us something cool that's going on in your department using the, the technology on the Chromebook project. So uh, one, one of our uh, science teachers got up and, and demonstrated the use of um, Great Alicious, which was an add-on for Google that allows you to bring up on your screen student work and the rubric. You complete the rubric for the piece of work and then the program attaches the two and you can send it back to the kid with the feedback on the rubric all, all in one fell swoop. And, and that stuff's going on around here all the time. People are finding these things and they're sharing them with their colleagues and then we've got this forum to, to allow that to happen. We've kind of taken uh, control of, of PD at the school level mm -hmm. with our site-based days and with our PD days and, and we've sort of created a, uh, it's a Catsy Camp model which is you can go to this session or you can go to this session, you can go to this session or you can work with a couple of people on this other stuff. It's not prescribed, dictated. It's grassroots generated, this is what I'm interested in doing, this is what I'm interested in learning. And some of our youngest teachers are the best teachers that we've got in terms of explaining it to other people. Perfect. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. Great. I, th I think you, uh, uh, you mentioned about having the, uh, the grade 9 uh, evening. So what was the parents' response to that? Oh, they're, they're over the top. They're literally over the top, in a, in a good way. Um, we have uh, a, a, a parent in the community who's a an online presence and and this lady has been promoting and say well I can't believe my kid came home from school today with a Google Chromebook how exciting is that um, the, the parents were lining up on grade 9 parents night to, to express their uh, their joy in this this very cool initiative that uh, only three schools in the board are participating in right now and uh, they were there hasn't been uh, a single issue that's emerged from this, from a parent, from a student, from a teacher, or from anybody in the school community. Everybody's on board from in-school technician, front office staff, administration, teaching staff, the whole works. And we even worked out a deal with the, with the kids that when your Chromebook comes, it comes in this box. We don't want to overwhelm our custodians with the boxes and the recycling. So please take the box home and put it in the blue box at home to give our custodians a break in terms of, you know, 350 cardboard boxes and styrofoam and all that other stuff. So. It sounds like you've really put the whole notion of community into every aspect of, of planning. Yes, yeah, this. yeah. So. And, and the school council is excited about what's going on. It's, um, and we got buy-in from just about everybody. Great. So from your perspective as the school leader, what would you see as being uh, really important next steps? I think what, um, what's important for us is to maintain the enthusiasm um, and, and to keep it moving through the course of the semester. Um, for me, it's about identifying those key personalities, the key teaching staff who are the innovators and who are out there and are doing this work. And we've had people that have involved in online education through e-learning, Futures Forum Project, other kinds of things that are innovative and creative supporting them, but it's also about bringing along that next generation mm -hmm. of, of people, um, what, what is referred to as the first followers, right, and, and catalyzing that and bringing that forward, because if you can get, the innovators are going to do it regardless. Right. It's bringing that next group along, and that next group then brings the next group along, and, and, and then, then magic, magic happens, right. So 
moving it forward so the grade nines I mean, it'll become next year's grade tens and so on and so on and, and yeah so for me really it's not a question of having to motivate it's more like I got this huge mass of energy that I'm just trying to guide in a certain direction and um, I think we're going to be a, a pretty popular place for kids to attend and staff will want to work here and that that I can't imagine a better environment in a school setting. Well that's great I know certainly uh, today in our conversations with a variety of uh, staff that dropped by to share it was really an interesting perspective to hear English and science and math and art and, and your music had dropped in yep. and so on and so everybody's is rethinking they're exploring they're mm -hmm. you know, looking at things in new ways yep. and that that's just such an invigorating learning learning yep. space for all and I think you know you've actually hit something when your most uh, thoughtful senior staff members who are in some cases a little more resistant to change embrace the idea and become promoters of, of, of an, an initiative rather than pointing out the six reasons why this won't work and, and we've got that. Yeah, the, the naysayers have pretty much vanished from the horizon. Well and I, I know some of the, the uh, folks today uh, that we chatted with openly said I'm pretty new at this mm -hmm. um, but described really transformative um, changes in how yep. they were looking at yep. things so very powerful. So in terms of seeing maybe what happens next with this project, do you have any final comments? Um, in terms of what, from the system level or, mm -hmm. yeah, this, this to me is one of those experiments that has been so successful right from the beginning that it would be my hope that this would map out not only for the next four years for, and, and afterwards for kids that come to my school, but that other schools take a look at what's going on and are caught up in the same the same wave and that it's not too far into the future before every grade nine kid walking into a, a school uh, in the Waterloo Region District School Board gets their Chromebook on the first day of school and, and it just becomes a natural part of what happens in education in this part of Ontario. Well, listen, that's been a fantastic time uh, for me here at the school today, and I appreciate you taking time. I know it's uh, Friday, and we're looming on a long weekend <laughs> here, but uh, it's been, I think, important to share and capture these. It's been comments. awesome. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for coming down. Great day. Thanks, yeah. Ed. Thanks to uh, folks that are watching, and uh, I'll be putting a copy of our uh, video comments online. Uh, check out blog.markwcarbone.ca for more. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving.